It's time to take a deep dive into the quarterback everyone is looking at. That is one Mr. Trey Lance, a player that so far has 29 attempts this preseason. That's about one whole game's worth of stuff. So we thought we would take a look at the roller coaster that is this rookie's preseason to date. We've got eight plays for you that display both the good and the bad from Trey Lance's preseason. And we begin with the play that sent sports media a flutter in his first game against the Chiefs. And that was a deep shot on play action. Of course, why not play action to Trent Sherfield to uh, open up the, the game against Chiefs? Yeah, so let's uh, let's let it roll here. And I think everybody's probably seen uh, this play a good number of times at this point. But we'll we'll let it go here and then kind of point out a, a few things that uh, I think are worth talking about with this one but yeah i think obviously the the thing that stands out there right is is of course the arm strength and then just the ability to stretch the defense vertically this is something that's just been missing from their offense and, and the ability to do this consistently and so i think you see uh you know obviously great play design here um you know rolling out to the left and then b basically setting up this uh throwback to the right hand side and and they benefit from uh, some pretty terrible safety play 24 there um, that's kind of down into the boundary uh, really should be getting eyes on this but I think he he kind of over commits and and basically thinks that that route's going to be breaking more outside to the corner goes back to the post and he just is unable to recover and I mean you look at this throw and, and kind of where he releases it right like from the 12 13 yard line there and Sherfield's catching this on the opposite 43 right like across the field too so i mean the the air yards on this is is pretty insane and i think shows off the the really high end of his arm strength and and what he can open up for this offense vertically and this is something that shanahan wants in his offense he has always tried to get a speedster he's got these play action shots and and that is i mean that's a pretty ball it's great it's a touchdown he hits him effectively in stride everything about that throw is great from the end zone angle here can't really see the safety all that much but really you can see exactly what Trey Lance is looking at he sets up and he just launches it and now it's it's there it's money it's a touchdown and that puts everyone that puts a smile on everyone's face and that's the good side <laughs> now we get to the bad side it's a roller coaster after all and here you see a near interception where really it's it's a little bit of a welcome to the NFL moment rook because the defenses and the structure of the defenses that he's seeing now are not the same exact ones that he's seeing in FCS. Yeah, I mean, so we, we talked about this uh, play a bit on the podcast. Whoops, sorry. I already got ahead of myself there. Let's let it run. Um, yeah, we talked about this a little bit in, in terms of Kansas City showing kind of some different looks that um, I guess you you not really used to seeing in the preseason, right? Some some blitz packages and stuff that were a little bit more advanced and, and – uh, and especially than what we saw, we're going to get to some plays obviously from the chargers game there. And, and I think they went a lot more vanilla. So not the type of thing that you're really expecting to be thrown at him here in preseason, but uh, you can see ultimately they're bringing pressure off the right hand side of the offense. They're going to kind of rotate into this too deep zone pressure look. And, and so I think what Lance is assuming is that he's basically got this corner out from the slot uh, that's going to be one on one the safety, right? And he, he thinks uh, that he's got all of that open space there to the sideline outside the number to be able to let this rip and doesn't get a good read on the corner who is, is going to let that underneath route go and sink underneath this, right? And so just kind of never sees that coming, throws it basically right to him. I mean, this is a, a pass that absolutely should have been picked. Yeah, if you think of the original structure of the play, like what's he looking at pre-snap that's that's letting him think that he's got this, is he's seeing this mass of humans over here on the right-hand side. And when he sees that single high safety in the middle of the field, he's thinking it's probably some going to be some kind of man pressure where you get more rushers, everyone else is in man, and you've got that single high safety. But what happens late is not that. You get a split safety look, and in that split safety look now, you've got that corner uh, the over on the right hand side is going to sink and end up getting into that lane. If this is man coverage, this guy's running with uh, number 86 over here. But because it's not, he's just not where he thinks he's supposed to be. Um, and so it's just a complete misread from Lance. And honestly, it's an understandable one for someone who hasn't played football in over 500 days at this point uh, and is used to playing FCS defenders. Now he's 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 getting hit with NFL concepts uh, and NFL yep. defenses, and, and that's what's going to happen. That's why I think he needs some snaps because he's got to see that stuff. He's got experience and he's got to learn from it. 
Um, you know, and so you go off of that play, which is bad. Now you get to the good and, and you get to really his arm strength again on a third and eight play that this is the kind of stuff that really good quarterbacks are going to be able to do is they're going to have a throw beat coverage on third down. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, one of his better throws, I thought, from this this game. I mean, honestly, probably one of the better throws from this preseason so far. And so, again, from Kansas City's perspective, uh, we're going to get some disguise here with the coverage right so they're going to start this time showing more of a too high look and then rotate down into his own pressure again with a, a single high um look after the snap right so you get that the safety um that's over there to the offense's right side of the field he's going to drop down and then what this ultimately does for for lance right once he sees a safety rotation um he knows he's got one-on-one, -on -one, right? That corner essentially is going to be locked up with Richie James on the outside because of the way uh, that they're kind of spinning this coverage. And, and he's playing off, and so we know that we've got space to throw to here, to the outside, uh, to the sideline. And the corner does, I mean, again, he's he's given a good amount of cushion, but he does a decent job breaking on this. And, and as we get to kind of the end zone view here, you'll see, I mean, it's not like a ton of space at the end of it, right? Like, uh, th this ball location is very important. And if this is off target, right, that defender, if this is behind, is in position to make a play on it, right? But because he throws it, gets it to that front shoulder up and away, right, which is where we want any of these outbreaking routes like this, um, you know, up and away is where you're looking for the quarterback to be able to put the ball in, and he puts it right on the money there. James should have this for a first down and he just drops it. Go back to the sideline view because look at when Lance starts to the, to really throw the ball. It, it is going to be just a bit before James breaks. So he's trusting his eyes and he's throwing like right there. So it's like at the break, the ball's already in that motion to get out. And, and so it's with enough anticipation that he is putting it on him in the right spot. You know, if that ball's any later, James is already out of bounds and the drop doesn't matter because he's already probably got a couple feet out of bounds. So everything about that throw was great. You know, it's, it's again, similarly long throw. He's got to put it on a rope. Third and eight, he converts it if his quarterback or if his uh, wide receiver can catch. So we get from another good play to another bad play. This is another dropped interception. And this is a play where he's not so much misreading the coverage, but he is just getting to his throw a little late. And he's a little inaccurate, which lets the defender get hands on ball. Yeah. So I think, well, you, you can really see this from, from the end zone view a little bit better. So you get the gist of it here, right? As it rolls from the, the sideline um, and, and you can see the, the defender kind of undercut it there. But yeah, I think here we go from a player right where you mentioned the timing being very good and, and him getting the ball out of his hands right at the moment that he needs to in, in order to hit that out route to Richie James. And here I think we see, I mean, there, there's a couple things. I got a little bit of issue with um, Jennings and kind of where he decides to sit this down. So right here you can see like he's how he's kind of leaning more over to the right hand side of the field like ideally i'd like to, him to get more right in front of this tampa defender right who is at 23 there that's kind of dropping out and in, into that middle of the field zone role on this tampa two coverage right i with this sit route that he's basically going so this is situation wise this is third and long i think it's third and 14 third and 15 and so jennings is really basically trying to get to the sticks and turn around and show his numbers right and lance needs to put it on him so I, I would like Jennings to get more in front of that Tampa defender to make this a longer distance that that other defender has to travel right to get there. But either way, you can see Lance, right, as, as we pause it here as Jennings is starting to break, right? So Jennings is putting that foot in the ground. He's about to turn around for the ball. You can see Lance, unlike the previous play, is not getting ready to throw it at this point. So he still takes another hitch here. And then he throws it, and that is what gives the defender time to be able to break under this ball. And again, it's it's another one that's right in the arms of the defender should be picked off here, um, and, and it's because the timing right isn't there. All right, but we got to go on the upswing of this roller coaster. This is going to be a sideline shot down the right sideline to none other preseason hero, maybe our future. The Corey Sheets is the future player of the preseason, Trent Sherfield, on a play where. It shows his touch and his accuracy on a deep ball on a play that was incorrectly diagnosed as cover two by Dan Fouts on the broadcast, uh, but is really cover three. And this is just, I mean, it's its a busted coverage. It's a good throw. And it's Trent Sherfield doing Trent Sherfield preseason things. 
and it shows again that just the ability of Trey Lance to attack all areas of the football field because of his talent. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it, it's look, it's an ugly look from the defense here. So we're we're again rotating from um, you know as we get to the Chargers game here. This is kind of really the most um, advanced type of coverage, which is again just this is a very basic three deep three under zone pressure that um, you know teams are going to run basically every single week in every game, and, and so nothing too wild here. But basically, I mean, I think Lance does a good job, right? You see the safety rotation, and and you see the safety that's down to the boundary, right, to the short side of the field. He's going to be the one that ends up rotating to the middle, and a lot of times you want to throw kind of away from the direction or I guess to the direction that the the rotating safety is coming from right so that deep safety is he's rotating from in this case the offense is right to left if you throw it to where he came from it's harder for him to change directions right he's got to basically rather than keep running the direction he's already headed uh, he's got to put his foot in the ground and get back to where he just came from so I I think he does a good job kind of picking the side of the field that he's going to go to based on how this thing rotates after the snap um, gets a little lucky in terms of uh, the busted coverage. But if you look at um, when he throws this, right? So here in this shot, he's already starting to go through his throwing motion, right? The, the defender hasn't fallen off yet. Now, this slot defender here should carry this, and he just kind of passes it off. And that's what ultimately leads to um, you know, a bunch of space for him to be able to complete this into. But the time he's throwing it, he doesn't know that, right? He's already throwing it, even in, if that guy is going to kind of turn and run. So I think you see better anticipation here, better timing, um, you know, good diagnosis of the defense and, and gets it to the right spot and, and makes an accurate throw. Now you've got the good followed by the bad. This is an accurate an inaccurate throw behind Charlie Warner. And it's an inaccurate throw that results almost in another interception. And we've talked about his inaccuracy issues in college and how he's going to need to work on that in the pros. This is why that accuracy matters, because if he's going to try to make those throws and he's just a little off target, well, now all of a sudden you're going to give the defense a chance to get hands on ball. And if you're not playing against players that are, well, rather if you're playing against players that are going to be on an NFL roster in the regular season, they might make that catch. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the kind of concerning things right with uh with some of his inaccuracies in college and and you look at the level of competition right and it's a lot of times when he's missing these throws that there aren't really defenders around to take advantage of them right and so here you're getting in the preseason you're you're kind of a step up from that right the the defenders are in position to take advantage they're just not actually taking advantage right they continue to drop them but i think yeah we get the best look at it from the end zone view here you can really see uh where this ball ends up and how far behind it is. And, you know, again, it's just right through the the defender's arms there. And if we go back to the um, sideline here, it's another thing kind of that there have been a few plays throughout the preseason where he just seems hesitant to pull the trigger for some reason, even though the throw is there. He had a few in this game. And this is one here where I think he's got the underneath option wide open to to Ross Dwelly and is it really his first look on the play and, and the ball should be out. And so here with this coverage look right. So again, it's another zone pressure. You see the safety that's to the wide side of the field. He's the one that's rotating down that would have to be the one that gets out to this flat. And he's just got a long distance to travel. I mean, this is first and 10, right? So we're not talking about a third down play where he has to force it to the sticks and and look to move the chains there. Like, this is a wide open, give me underneath throw um, that he's going to have space to run, right? If he puts this out in front of him, um, he's going to have a chance to turn up the sideline there and, you know, get some yards after the catch. But instead, he doesn't pull the trigger there. He gets to his second look and and then leaves it behind. And uh, yeah, so I think just a kind of a an all around bad play here. Yeah, that hesitation is something that maybe he's trying to just be aggressive. He's trying to get the ball to a little bit farther downfield. And, and ultimately, if you're not going to be able to complete the pass with accuracy, then, you know, it could present some problems. But one of the things that Trey Lance brought to the table that Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have, especially after he tore his ACL, was the ability to create on second chances. And while this next play was nullified due to penalty, it was a scramble on the two-point conversion, it just shows what he is able to do when things break down. And it's another thing that the Niners have in their arsenal to keep the offense moving when things begin to break down. And boy, did they break down. (laughs) Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we show this one, even though it's nullified by penalty, right? Because I think 
one, I don't, I don't know that the penalty had too much bearing on, on his ability to get out of the pocket here and, and get out on the scramble. But yeah, when you look at it, kind of everything around him, right, the protection and then what's happening with the route, uh, it's hard to imagine things falling apart more than they did on this play. So he gets to the top of his drop here and he's in a good spot, right? We've talked uh, in previous videos and a lot on the podcast about how sometimes you'll see quarterbacks get too deep and that puts their tackles in a bad situation, right? And it kind of changes the angles that they're protecting for. Um, this is not one of those situations, right? He's he's in a good spot <laughs> behind, uh, you know, the, the O-line where he's supposed to be. Both tackles getting beat here, right? You can see both of them allowing their guy to kind of turn the corner um, and and really have a free shot at closing on the quarterback at this point. Then the other thing you have going on, so he's, again, looking to his right-hand side, and and you have kind of a double slants concept over here. So you're going to read that inside out, right? And so you see first this this inside slant that's there, that's taken away, right? You've got the, the man coverage defender there, and then you've also got the underneath guy that's kind of sliding out underneath it. So that one's gone. There should be space for this outside slant, but this is Sherfield down here, um, and and he's just kind of I don't know doing who knows what fucking around down there. Uh, gets kind of walled off from the corner, and he's so late that it that throw just doesn't become an option right with the pressure. And so you see not only the offensive line getting beat quickly, um, his receivers aren't giving him anywhere to throw the ball. And you still turn this into a positive play, right? This is the kind of thing with Jimmy Garoppolo. A lot of times these are probably going to be sacks, right? Or he's going to have to maybe he gets out of there and he throws it away um, because he doesn't quite have the athleticism. That, that might be a ligament. That, that's a ligament on the <laughs> yeah. ground. I mean, that might right there, MCL, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that, there it went. Um, you, need, you need those pliable young ligaments is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so you just kind of see, you know, even when things, this is, I think, the really exciting thing about Lance, right, is is the ability to keep plays alive when everything around him is going poorly. And the thing so far this preseason, too, is that most of his his both successes and mistakes have been in the pocket. He's not a quarterback that's really looking to run first. I think you see a little bit of that run first from Justin Fields this preseason, but he is really trying to make it work in the pocket, which is exactly where he needs to win from. But it's two points. He wanted to get it, and he went and got it. Uh, and that's the kind of athleticism that you want. And that can really be really beneficial in the NFL at the quarterback position. But you go from the good, you go to the bad. Now you get another inaccurate pass to Richie James. And this one is another pass that really should have been picked off. Things are falling apart again. His wide receivers are on the ground doing tumbling routines. And, and then he just kind of, he does what you would hope. He breaks contain, gets outside of the pocket, but then he just can't execute. That ball is just left too far inside again. And it almost results in another interception. Yeah, so you get you get the good look here from the end zone via right, right off the defender's hands, just kind of um, doesn't get enough on it. And honestly, just kind of a poor decision. That's not a great angle to be able to get the ball to. But yeah, you see, right? You see Richie James right away there falling down. Um, you see whoever, what Rivers Craycraft up there uh, that's going to fall down here just a moment after. And, and so everybody's on the ground here that he's looking to. He's got one other option deep that I think is taken away. But it, at this point, too, you're, right, you're starting to get pressure. You start to get guys uh, flushing him from the pocket. And so he gets out, right? He's looking downfield, still trying to make things happen. Um, and just, I think gets a little too ambitious here. I mean, this, this defender is all over it. He doesn't get lost in the scramble drill. He's right on the hip in position to undercut it. Um, this is one that, yeah, you just have to eat You either use your athleticism. I think this is probably one he needs to take off with, right? I think he can get exactly. around, uh, the edge there. 58 doesn't seem to be in position to kind of cut him off. So I think he gets around there. And because of the coverage that they're in, right. And, and they're tracking these guys now in man coverage, uh, on the scramble drill, like he's going to have some space to run for it. Um, but worst case scenario, right? You get out and, and you can't turn the corner. And you throw this ball away. It's tough when your two man concept, when effectively levels in the middle of the field is really, both of them fall down. It's like, I, mean, I don't, it's, I don't it's think a that's pretty how hilarious image right here. Like <laughs> how pissed is Kyle Shanahan, right? And you know, he froze it at this moment, like in the media and being like, what the fuck? This is straight up looking like some toddler Jimbery shit. I'm pretty sure I saw this in my daughter's gymnastics class last week. Like that's, that's what this is looking like right now. Oh, <laughs> but we man. end on a good note because this was a really, really good throw. This was the touchdown to Travis Benjamin at the end of the second preseason game against the Chargers. And Troy Lance confirmed in a post game interview with Tim Kawakami that this was indeed a, a full field read. He went to the left, didn't like what he saw there, 
comes back around and just whips an absolute dart to Travis Benjamin. And Travis Benjamin, he's a vet. He's not going to sit here and complain the ball's too fast or too hard. He's going to get that ball. He's going to catch it, and he's going to score a touchdown. This is the promise of Trey Lance right here, reading the full field and using his his physical talent to get the ball to the right spot and scoring points. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, this is a, a very similar concept to the, you know, the Chip Kelly Y cross uh, that you talked about, right? It's a little bit different route that you get from Benjamin here than, than they like to run with the kind of that deep over route. Um, but it's the same idea, right? So he's going to look uh, to the left initially, right? As he's kind of in his drop back and they're trying to get, you know, a fade um, on the outside with Craycraft. And then they're trying to get, you know, a little out route stick route there. Um, on the inside and so he's basically reading that deep to short right he wants to see do I have a chance to get it over the top on that vertical route down the sideline um, or do I want to drop it off here both those guys well covered I mean uh, the outside route specifically just gets completely shut down has no chance there so he's off that right by the time he hits the the final step in his drop right here he's already off of that finding his way back over um, you know to Benjamin in the slot and you can really see from the end zone view here too I mean uh, my guy 31 here, I have, I have no clue who this linebacker is. That's right there in the, the middle. Um, but he had, he had a rough day. Um, and, and this is one where, yeah, he's so chargers are in cover one here. He's kind of the free underneath defender there, uh, in the hole that really should be looking right to help on, on these in breaking routes. And he gets, uh, caught kind of sliding over to this out route that he's never going to be able to help on opens up this space in the middle of the field. Uh, and yeah, you can see just an absolute laser here from Lance, um, fitting it into that space. And again, right on the money. I mean, this is, uh, a, a putting it in a spot that allows him to continue running after the catch, right? Because it's not like, I mean, Benjamin's got a step here, but if this is an off target throw, if this is on the back shoulder, right? That defender's in position to close and make the tackle still, but by putting on the front shoulder, allowing him to kind of catch that in stride and continue running, that's the difference between, uh, you know, what, just a, a 10, 12 yard gain there and a touchdown. Quick note from the research department, number 31 for the chargers, Nick Neiman, not to be confused with Newman, man, Nick maybe, Neiman, maybe uh, AKA got cut in the locker room after this game. <laughs> Maybe he's one letter off from being your cousin, bro. Simmer, simmer down. Look, I ain't playing <laughs> but, in the NFL. All right. <laughs> Overall, you can see that Trey Lance is not a finished product. And and we knew that coming in. He was drafted for his upside, and it's an upside that you can clearly see. And while yes, it's been an up and down roller coaster so far this preseason, he needs these reps. He needs to get these kinks out because once he gets these kinks out, uh, and, and he develops, and you can see the the good stuff there, and and that stuff begins to take over. You can see why tra- why uh, Shanahan traded as many picks as he did to go up and get Trey Lance. So it's exciting, I think, an exciting tape. He's got a he's got some stuff to clean up, but that's that's what upside means, right? Upside means you've got some stuff to work on. You're not a finished product. This is not who you're going to be after this year, next year, uh, and even if you're going to go with the Josh Allen comp. Even Josh Allen, you know, took uh, a couple years for him to be the quarterback that everyone thinks he is now going forward. So that does it for this week's Patreon video. Thanks again for tuning in and thanks for buying us a beer. Uh, We were 100% drunk throughout this entire video, I promise. Uh, All thanks to you. So thanks again for tuning in. And as always, go Niners.